Hi, and welcome to a new series called The Monthly Buzz, in which we try to digest the news themes of the last month in EV news, sustainable energy, transport technology, and all that good stuff. Uh, a little poll on YouTube and uh, tried to get a feel for when people might want a uh, digest of what's happened in over a certain period of time. Monthly seemed to be the most uh, popular. What I'm trying to get out of it is just to digest and kind of summarize the main themes of the previous month, which for this one will be January 2021, and uh, see if we can draw any threads of what's coming up in the next month, try and chronicle progress of uh, electric vehicles and related adjacent sectors. So without further ado, let's dive in to the monthly buzz for January 2021. So a ban on sales of new vehicles with combustion engines from 2035. If it sounds familiar, it should do. That's what California led with uh, late last year. Been quite common in Europe. We've seen it spread from Norway, one of those early markets, as uh, GM is now taking aim at in uh, tongue-in-cheek adverts. I tend to see these things as more aspirational. They're kind of a target date by which we should really be hoping to move away from uh, combustion vehicles anyway. The technology of uh, battery electric vehicles is expanding so quickly that we should be able to get there sooner, really really just by virtue of the quality of the technology. It's interesting to see these things get over here. I didn't think they would be this quick, but it leads us into the next topic of EV momentum and how quickly things seem to be shifting now. Look at some of the stories in the mainstream media and the, uh, the tech media where they were previously maybe a bit skittish and even, you know, just downright daft in the case of uh, certain publications trying to replicate EV road trips. Then uh, now they're kind of, they're starting to change their tune. You see a lot more about the cost of batteries coming down, the range of uh, cars going up, charging time getting closer to, uh, to gasoline vehicles. There's more of a groundswell of these things are cleaner. They can do a lot of the things that gasoline cars can do and a lot of things better. There was a specific piece, an MIT study, which finally did an authoritative look at uh, how clean electric cars are compared to gasoline vehicles. Well, and it's not perfect, you know, there are some, some things that you kind of miss, uh, but they have to make these assumptions because, you know, efficiency varies of uh, electric vehicles. So they're taking things like EPA range and trying to extrapolate from there. But even over the lifetime of a vehicle, the most inefficient electric vehicles, which are the kind of your Audi e-trons and your i-paces, right on the cusp, you know, of the very the best case uh, plug-in hybrid or hybrid, so MIT has done these studies before, but a lot of these um, have failed to take into account the full lifetime of the um, combustion vehicle, the uh, the cost of getting gasoline to a station and how much that, you know, contributes to emissions. So we're starting to see the narrative change as a result of things, studies like that, that uh, it's just backing up what we already know, that EVs are cleaner. They only take, you know, within six to 18 months of their initial higher production emissions to kind of recoup that and then they're cleaner all the way through and it just depends how clean your grid is from there. So that kind of shift in tone it has been noticeable in January and uh, it goes hand in hand with things like saying 500,000 new uh, charging stations by 2030, uh, electrifying the US fleet of some 645,000 vehicles. And how much of this can get done is obviously, you know, the question mark and we need to see more, but this is all part of this shift in tone, uh, focusing more on how quickly the electric vehicle transition will happen rather than questioning the worth of electric vehicles in the first place and whether this can uh, be something that will ever happen. And on the topic of infrastructure here in Massachusetts, we got uh, a little update on uh, what will be happening in the near future. Uh, $4 million invested or to top up the existing electric vehicle incentive programs. Uh, 1.5 million of that going to DC fast charging, which we do need. We've looked at the uh, infrastructure up and down the Mass Pike and some of the other parts of the state. 
and uh, we have some gaps to fill and some uh, older equipment to give either redundancy or to set up new sites so that people have more options. Uh, also 1.5 going million going to public charging L2. So that'll be stuff in retail lots, um, you know, commercial zones, uh, getting them in new builds, retrofitting older um, apartment buildings, that kind of thing. And then another one million going to work and fleets, which uh, again, workplace charging, very big part of that. If you're not able to get it in an older home or a, you know, home charging or an apartment multi-unit dwelling uh, charging, you know, if you can top up your car in the daytime, that's just the equivalent for a lot of people of uh, doing it overnight. So that will work. Uh, and fleet's obviously a big part. We've talked about the US fleet being electrified or that being the goal. Sell an individual EV, that's progress. But if you sell a fleet of EVs, you're you're moving you know, in tens or hundreds of vehicles at a time. That's a lot quicker than winning over every individual customer. Both important parts, but certainly fleets will play a big part in electrifying you know, the country's transportation. I also wanted to use this uh, kind of time to introduce a few new uh, series that we'll be working on. So the state of EV charging, having done the Massachusetts version up and down the Mass Pike, uh, we'll start to branch it and look at on a state by state basis, what are different places doing? This will be kind of, uh, you know, a moment in time. It's more of a snapshot than uh, a long-term pro projection, but we'll try and look at the plans that are currently in place, how long they've been percolating and uh, take a look at us, you know, so everybody who watches these videos in a particular state and maybe doesn't feel like, you know, we can talk about their state that often, we'll have some kind kind of, uh, you know, basis for where their state is on the electrification path and how the infrastructure is developing. And moving on to models, uh, we can look at GM, who uh, exhibited in uh, virtual form at uh, CES 2021. Uh, so obviously normally this would be a place where you would demonstrate your uh, latest technology out in Las Vegas. They have uh, history there. They released the Bolt in 2016, I think it was, or unveiled it at uh, that show, kind of with a mind to forward-thinking technology. A wider virtual event of something they called Exhibit Zero. So lots of zeros. You have Factory Zero at the uh, old Detroit Hamtrank plant. And uh, a lot of news coming out of this Exhibit Zero. Lots of little kind of, you know, clearly uh, very heavily marketed and carefully produced pieces with uh, celebrities. There was a rebrand. They had their uh, logo changed up a little bit. Um, everybody in with uh, Chevrolet also having an EV in there. They're playing on this a lot. It gets a little bit um, nauseating in some ways. There's a bit too much focus when there's still a lot of gasoline vehicles being sold, but you can see the shift starting to happen. GM has said it will stop selling combustion vehicles, so it's drawn a line in the sand for that. You could certainly argue that there has been some feet dragging with the Bolt EV not being heavily upgraded, waiting around for the Bolt EUV, which will be released you know, later this year. That's moving in the right direction. Again, it's this kind of undertone of January with everybody starting to push towards the goal of uh, electric vehicles being the mainstream. First of all, overcoming the initial barriers and then increasing the amount of models available, getting them out into every vehicle category, every segment, of cars that people want to buy and proving that they're every bit as good and even you know, better in a lot of cases uh, than the traditional gasoline equivalent. Continuing the theme of uh, EV momentum and why this is kind of uh, something that it's not going to be put back in the bottle now. Um, in the UK, a ZapMap survey, where ZapMap is the equivalent of plug share pretty much. So ZapMap uh, confirms that electric vehicle drivers generally do not want to go back to combustion cars. Again, something that we as uh, long-standing EV drivers know, but 91% uh, said they love their EV, would never consider a combustion engine again. 8% said they may consider it, so hedging their bets a little. So then you're only left with obviously 1% who miss petrol or diesel. So you can certainly see there are edge cases where people might have to drive a lot and get frustrated with the charging infrastructure. But essentially we are talking vast, vast majority of people confirming exactly what we already know, that uh, people don't want to go back. Once you drive an EV, bums in seats, that kind of thing, that's the most effective way to get people into electric vehicles. 
the theme of momentum and people not wanting to go backwards, only looking forwards uh, either to their the future of their electric vehicle or to their next electric vehicle. Um, there's a lot of models being uh, kind of lined up for February. We're now into February. This is obviously uh, taken me a bit longer to put together than uh, I had hoped. We'll be trying to get this uh, this news kind of monthly buzz out on uh, the last day of the month or, you know, very early into the, the next month. So February 2021, Audi e-tron GT is going to be unveiled. So again, the progression of the e-tron line, Audi doing a lot more advertising to uh, start to kind of build on the platform. Uh, February 14th, um, GM has kind of a odd uh, matchup with um, Disney and looking at uh, unveiling the Bolt EUV. It's on Valentine's Day, so if you love Chevrolet, that is a good uh, mix-up. So the Bolt EUV is gonna be an interesting one. We'll talk about it in another video, maybe closer to the unveil. As it stands right now, the Bolt EUV is gonna come into a much more crowded marketplace than the Bolt EV has ever had to deal with. And uh, it's gonna have to really step up a lot of the specs. Uh, the Super Cruise Edition is gonna be a nice one that will address people's concerns with the driver tech. You have have to assume that inside the cabin they're going to have made it a lot more comfortable and more upscale um, but the the big thing for road tripping this car is uh, it's going to have to charge a lot faster it cannot be sitting at 50 kilowatts for elongated periods anymore if they intend to make it a uh, kind of competitor in that mid-priced uh, SUV crossover space the Bolt EV obviously uh, is going to get a refresh for the 2022 model year. Um, beyond that, mid-February to late February, we have the Hyundai Ioniq 5, which is really looking like an intriguing car. It's it's kind of come out of not necessarily nowhere because we did know that the Hyundai 45 concept was coming and uh, it's remained quite faithful to that. So it's really just the through line of that uh, model. But it's, it's interesting to see. It's going to have 800 volt architecture. So the charging is going to be a lot quicker. Uh, range doesn't seem like it's going to blow our minds, still in that 200s, mid 200s, uh, you know, depending on where the EPA comes in. But it's a very retro car, looks quite, you know, long wheelbase, um, very 80s inspired in some ways with pixelated um, rear lights. It's, you know, it's one of those kind of potential Honda E types that people just fall in love with. But that looks good. I mean, the thing with Hyundai is that they've, you know, always had the efficiency down. Kona Electric tends to go further than its EPA ratings, even on the highway. The Hyundai Ionic is known as the wind knife. You know, this is one of these things that just delivers over its efficiency time and time again and held the crown until the uh, Tesla Model 3 finally usurped it. The other big model that we had come out, I mean, we've had a lot of news around uh, Tesla. Um, the Model Y uh, standard range is the biggest one, I think, that uh, was kind of announced last month, having said that sub 250 ma mile range was unacceptable last year and effectively making people think that there would be no uh, lower range uh, Tesla Model Y. Uh, here they come. They've got the uh, standard range ready to order, 244 miles of range. And, you know, to be honest, with the Tesla's charging speed and the infrastructure they have, that is plenty around that 40, low $40,000. Um, obviously without tax credits, but, you know, we'll see if that comes back for them. If it does, that is a, a game changer in a lot of ways at that price point in that segment. Um, and a lot of people are going to go with that. You know, if you couldn't get into a, a Tesla of the form factor you wanted in that popular crossover section uh, before now, but now it's in the same uh, kind of price category as your Volkswagens and your Fords and whatever uh, GM comes out with, then that's starting to become a pretty attractive product. And then we have the X and the S, Model X and Model S refresh. I won't go too far into it. You know, I think people have uh, have dived into every aspect of the vehicle, what's going to be different, what they like and what they don't like. Um, all I'll say is that, you know, I've always liked the Model S. I think that's probably still, you know, the most attractive vehicle they have. Don't really have a problem with the exterior design. So I wouldn't, you know, want to tinker with that too much. And inside, you know, aside from the steering wheel, which uh, has some question marks over it, I, I like the direction they're going. So that's the first monthly buzz under our belts. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. What would you like to see more of? What would you like to see less of? Does this work for you as a kind of digest of everything that happened in the previous month and uh, what little quick look at what's to come in the month ahead? 
Um, and yeah, what are you looking forward to in this uh, month of February? What models do you think will be the biggest splash? What uh, news do you think will uh, be of most interest? We'll also look at more at uh, sustainable tech and kind of transportation technology as we build these out. So uh, all suggestions welcome. This is a work in progress as with most things. So leave your comments down below. Look forward to the discussion and thanks for watching.